Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would um, film a video reviewing um, the books that I've read since I last did one of these videos because like I know I haven't posted on my channel for a long long time but when I was posting I used to post monthly or regular wrap ups and I would review on here every single book that I read. And I thought, well, it's been a while, but I'll, I'll do it. Let's catch up because I want to start filming videos more often now. And I realised I haven't done it at all for this entire year. Now, it's October and I've only read 22 books, which is the lowest I have read since I was like 18. Um, there's various reasons for that. It was higher at the beginning of the year um, because I used to lay next to my daughter and she would spend ages falling asleep and I would read um, an audiobook or sometimes on my Kindle then and that's not a thing anymore which is great but like so <laughs> my reading is really slowed down. I'm also in the middle of so many books so I feel like I have read a lot but I haven't finished a lot. Anyway um, so I haven't reviewed any books that I've read this entire year and we're going to start on that. Um, uh, 12 of those 22 books are part of series, part of different series, not all one series. Um, and I thought I would split it so I would do standalone books in this video and series in another video just because I'm going to have to split it because there are so many and that just kind of made sense. Um, that does leave me with 10 books to review. And we all know that I can really ramble on. So I'm going to try and whiz through these really quickly, but I might end up doing this in two parts. We're just going to keep an eye on the time and see how it goes. I've just noticed I have stickers <laughs> on my top. Um, I have a one-year-old. Well, she's almost two. She's two in like a week and a half, which is wild. Anyway, so we can talk about the standalone novels that I read in order. I only own a few of these physically, um, so <laughs> you're only going to see a few of them. I'm sorry. But the first one, we're starting off with a good one, is Temporary by Hilary Leichter. Leichter? I don't know how to pronounce her name. There's a few authors where I have no idea how, how to pronounce their names. Um, this was fantastic. I gave this, I checked on Goodreads, and I gave it five stars. I feel like that should maybe be four stars just because I don't remember it super well but then actually I was sitting there and the more I thought about it the more I remembered of the story so it could just be that I read this 10 months ago and that's why I have forgotten and also 10 months ago I was a lot more sleep deprived than I am now and it's a wonder I can remember anything but this book was fantastic I feel like this book feels falls into the category of books that I love which are kind of modern contemporary feeling books that have a surreal twist to them Things like um, The Bus on Thursday by Shirley Barrett. Uh, Several People Are Typing, which I have right uh, there by Crave Kalsuk. Uh, People From My Neighbourhood by Hiromi Kawakami. Those are the only three and this that I feel like fit into that category that I've read. Although I might have found another one today. But anyway, this is um, yeah, quite a surreal book that's very grounded in like modern day urban life I suppose. You follow a woman who is a temp. She works for a temping agency and she does all kinds of different jobs uh, and it kind of feels like a collected, a linked collection of short stories where you are following this one character but it is very much like she's doing this job, then this job, then this job and, and that's the way that it kind of feels like short stories. Um, but there is a progression through the book. And yeah, like one of the jobs, she plays a ghost for a bit. Another job, she uh, is like in an airship and in a team who are just pressing buttons that they're told to press. And she's starting to think that like maybe these buttons are dropping bombs. Who knows? Another one, she is a barnacle. That's her temp job. Like, and another one, she plays uh, a CEO like it's very all over the place um and it's really really interesting I, it's such a hard book to describe but there's like obviously like a lot of commentary going on about society work the gig economy i really like a good kind of 
satirical or surreal workplace book, which is what this is. I feel like the pacing was great, the tone was great, it was easy and quick to read, it made me think a lot, it was interesting. Um, yeah, so, so good. I can hardly anyone talk about it, and I don't think it has that many uh, reviews or good reads, so I would recommend checking it out if you um, are interested in the way that that sounds. The next one I also have a physical copy of is another really, really good one. Um, this is The Vaster Wilds by Lauren Graff. I think I talked about this as my favourite book of the year in a video I did recently that was like a check-in um, video. Uh, I love this. I love this so much. Um, I feel like this was kind of, um, you know, like you give lots of books five stars, but then some of the books are like the best of the five stars. Like these are the favourites, the, the tip top. That's that's one of the, that's what this is. Um, I love this book so much. So it's set in the 80, no, 80, 16 um, hundreds. Um, and you follow a girl who is part of one of the uh, groups of people that have gone to set up a colony um, in North America. And it's going really, really badly. I think a bunch of the ships in their fleet didn't make it and everybody's basically slowly starving. And she works for this family um, and she runs away because bad stuff has happened and because everyone's starving anyway and she's like hey this is shit I would do better on my own and you follow her the majority of the book is you following this girl um and her surviving in the wilderness and then part of that she'll be thinking back to her life so far and what has led up to this and that kind of thing which gives a lot of context to who she is and just like is an interesting story it was so so fantastic it was so fantastic she's such a compelling character she's so strong um and smart and like you're really rooting for her I love the detail of her time in the forest and how she's surviving and what she's doing it feels really atmospheric like you really feel the way it's written that like you're in there with her so like for me it's a really good balance between like really good just strong description that makes it really vivid but is not kind of overwritten and overwrought you know it's not like too literary it's very very good really really enjoyed it i know that lauren groff has a book it's called fates and furies um that's like about a couple in modern day and i am uh, so severely uninterested <laughs> in that but like historical fiction, excellent, loved it. So then I went on to read Matrix, which I believe was the book that was published right before this one and is also historical fiction. Um, she possibly, yeah, she has a short story collection, which I actually own and is up here somewhere. I can't see it right now. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah. I think this, that one and Matrix are her only historical fiction novels. Um, and if she writes any more, I will be buying them. Uh, but yeah, The Matrix, no, it's not The Matrix, it's just Matrix. I don't remember when it's set. Possibly, no, I think it's set earlier than that one, maybe the 50s? I don't know. It's been a long time since I read this book. Um, and I know that the time period is important because of stuff that's going on politically at the time, but oh, I had, I just had no idea <laughs> what was going on, uh, what time period it was. Um, I didn't enjoy it as much. Uh, so it's about a woman who is sent to work in work, like live, become part of, join a convent. Um, and so she like becomes a nun. I'm probably not gonna use all the right words, because I'm not religious in even the slightest. Um, and she doesn't like it, but you follow her throughout her whole life, like completely in opposition to this. You follow her over a short period. It spans a very long time, um, this book. And that was the best part of the book is that you see her kind of grow and change as a person. And she absolutely doesn't want to be there, but then she ends up kind of 
embracing it and thriving, getting really involved, becoming like one of the most important people there. And it's really interesting to watch that change and shift over time. Um, there's all other stuff going on. There's a lot of talk about kind of religion, um, which I'm not super interested in in books it didn't bother me in this book it wasn't overdone it kind of I kind of was a bit like oh yeah interesting but it didn't it was I didn't find it super compelling um and yeah there's all kinds of other little bits you know it's her whole life stuff is gonna happen there's like the political context but yeah again the same with kind of this one the whole book is propelled through by uh, an interesting strong character and uh, although I cannot remember <laughs> the time period from the book uh, it was interesting and I like reading about history so uh, I enjoyed it I thought it was good but not as good as The Vaster Wilds and I can see how it might be a bit of a miss for some people just because of the religious element of it I suppose uh, next after that I read The Women by Kristen Hanna and I also talked about this in my check-in video as a book that was a real disappointment to me um, Kristen Hanna I'm super unsure of I've read quite a few of her books her earlier books that I've read, I didn't enjoy. Like Firefly Lane, I think is the earliest book of hers that I've read. I didn't enjoy it. But then some of hers I really, really loved. Um, like for uh, The Four Winds, very, very good. The Great Alone, very good. The Wild, I also enjoyed. Um, so I was really excited for this one, really highly anticipating it. And I just found it to be a letdown. And a letdown in a way that, Kristen Hanna is usually strong at, in my opinion. So this is set during and after the Vietnam War in the USA, and you follow uh, a young woman who decides that she is going to uh, volunteer as a nurse and go <laughs> to Vietnam as a, a, is it an army nurse or a Marines nurse? I don't remember. Um, Cause like only one of them will let her in because she's young and inexperienced. Um, and so you kind of follow her as she does that and then afterwards and once like coming back now in theory that this book is called the women in theory the book is shining a light on the women that were there during the Vietnam War because uh, there were women there um, doing a lot of nursing and healthcare but they're not really acknowledged in history, they're not really remembered, and then afterwards when she got home, she was struggling with a lot of things like PTSD and coping with, you know, coming back to civilian life, but there were no support systems in place for women vets. She tried to go to like a support group and they were like, what, there were no women in Vietnam, this, this is not for you, you've got to leave. Um, so in theory, the book is kind of about the women, but it, it wasn't, <laughs> and... I just found it really disappointing um like it was very centered around men she decided to go to war because her brother did and then um she has a couple of different love interests throughout the book which are very end up being quite soap opera -y, uh and dramatic and uh a bit over the top and ends up kind of being the focus of the book is the men in her life, right? And I just found that incredibly disappointing. I felt like there were these, uh, in particular, like two women that she connects with and makes friends with while she's um, serving in Vietnam. And I feel like we, we do see them in the book, but I feel like it should have been about the three of them. And it wasn't, it was about her and her love interests and these women. And I just felt like for a book that it purports to be highlighting and shining a light on the women that were there there was a lot of it centered around men and her relationships with men in a way that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way as a book it was very readable like well paced enjoyed it the characters were well done they all felt you know like you know realistic characters i can imagine they weren't you know flat and two-dimensional so like in theory, it was well written. I just questioned the choice of having it focus so much on men. And I felt that that was a bit of a letdown because for me, in all of her previous works that I've enjoyed, I feel like she's so strong at writing female relationships, like whether that's friendships, sisters, mother and daughter, stuff like that. Uh, like even Firefly Lane, which I didn't really enjoy from her, 
like the best part of that book is the relationship between these two friends, this lifelong friendship and it ebbs and flows. And that is so realistically and well written, even in that book that I didn't really enjoy. That's what she's good at. So I was like, yeah, this is the book. <laughs> but it wasn't, I wasn't so good in this book. So that was disappointing. Uh, then we've got, I'm going to have to split this. No, I'm just going to talk faster. Uh, then we've got Year of Wonders by Geraldine Brooks, which I'm sure I own a copy of, but I cannot find it. Um, so good. So good. Very briefly, it's set um, during the plague in a small village in England. And basically, this village decides that in order to stop people from their village spreading the plague elsewhere, they are going to shut themselves off basically no one in no one out of this village until the illness has run its course through their village um and you follow a woman living there during that time period and it is horrific <laughs> it's horrific um like obviously reading the book that being the premise you know it's going to be a tough read um but like man what a great book oh my god <laughs> like I don't I, I don't know how to talk about the reason why it was so good in that um like so much happened in a but it, it was written in a way that didn't feel kind of sensationalized I suppose it felt like here are the realities of what happened here is you know compelling characters interesting detail good pacing, it felt so incredibly well researched and there's an author's note at the end where she talks about the research that she did for the book and how a lot of the things that happened are based on real things that happened. Uh, the whole premise is based on uh, a real village that made this decision and it was so, it felt really well done and then like the, the longer this goes on and the more bad stuff that happens in this village and the more terrible stuff they go through, the more they kind of, first they get, you know, more and more and more religious and then they sort of tend to rely heavily on superstition and then there's kind of you know accusing each other of witchcraft but also people rely heavily on witchcraft because they're like desperate to survive in any way um and the way that that is told it's not like mocking people it's not making a drama out of it it's just like a bleak and compelling look at a difficult terrible thing and the different ways that people handled it or didn't handle it. Uh, it was so fantastically well written. I can't speak highly enough of this book. It is a difficult read because bad stuff happens and it kind of, there's a real sense of it building um, as you move through the book, but it was so well written and so worth a read. Anyway, that's probably, as well as The Vast of Worlds, those are probably my top two of the year so far um and then we've got another historical fiction and then like a bunch of rom-coms uh so the last historical fiction i have read so far is everyone knows your mother is a witch by rivka gavchen Gavch? i'm not sure um this is a, another really really good book that was such a gem and a surprise and i loved it so much i found this in the feminist bookshop in brighton which has recently announced that they are permanently closing which is a real shame because it's a great book a great book a great shop but yeah it's gone now but like i'd never heard of this before and i saw it in the shop and i thought it, it sounded great and so it's set during uh the 1600s which i've now read a few books set during that time period and i would like to read more i think it's great um and you follow people in a very small town I feel like it's set in Germany, but I might be wrong. It's a Germanic language, somewhere around that region. Um, and it's set, I already said that, <laughs> during the 1600s. It says, the plague is spreading, the Thirty Years' War is beginning. And you follow a woman called Katerina, who is an older lady. She's got adult children, and she's accused of being a witch. And the entire book, is like a collection of documents that are like her case against her so the majority of the book i'd say the majority is narrated by her but it's supposed to be that somebody is writing down her uh, kind of testimony because she can't read and write because she's a woman um so a neighbor and a friend of hers who is a man is writing down what she says 
he will occasionally like put in little notes of his own then uh every so often you also get interviews with people from the village who are involved about their opinion on various things and on her and on other people involved and uh yeah it kind of documents through her testimony this whole period from like when she's accused to when the case happens which is quite a long period of time it moves very slowly um like the justice system um and there's a lot of like interesting politics going on at the time her son is uh like her son has gained a position that has quite a lot of prestige um and again like the previous book there's a lot about kind of superstition and like magic and witchery but, uh, but then like science and then like what is what and trying to sort of straighten all these things out and what's legitimate and what's you know like where's where's the line between like a plant that has natural properties that will soothe a burn on your skin and like a spell and a potion you know what i mean um and there's a really interesting discussion about that it's also a really interesting look at kind of people pointing the finger at each other and the way that people might manipulate the truth the way that people judge others and then like get kind of images of you in your mind and they might you might see the same thing from different perspectives depending on if you dislike that person or not um i just thought it was fantastic it was such an interesting story in so many so many different ways um and also the main character is fucking brilliant she's so like a I don't want to say feisty because that feels almost kind of belittling in the context of this character. She's just a strong woman who's had a tough life because she doesn't have a lot of money, but she's raised multiple children. She had a dickhead husband that left her and she's just a bit kind of straightforward, no nonsense. Um, and she just kind of gets on with things. She works hard um, and I love her. I think she's great. And that book was great. Okay, we're going to do the rest of these books in this video. The next are all, yeah, kind of rom-coms. So the first one was a book called I Hope This Finds You Well by Natalie Sue. Um, I listened to, no, I listened to most of these in audio. I listened to this one. Don't remember where I found it. I thought the cover looked cool. No, I didn't listen to this. I read it on my Kindle because I have a Kindle now. Um, it, yeah, so I don't remember where I found it. It's a fairly recent release. I really enjoyed it. It was a very kind of light kind of rom-com. Now, I don't read a lot of romance, a lot of rom-com. I would say that this is not in the romance genre, but it's like light rom-com. There's no spice. I don't know if that's an actual difference, but that like this is the side that I like to to be on. And also it's not it's not like heavy romance. They're not like going on dates. It's just kind of like a contemporary Bridget Jonesy chick lit kind of vibe but then there's also a guy there I don't know if that makes any sense let me just tell you what the book is about so the book is about a woman who um works at this office it's centered around her work a lot she works at this office don't remember they do something boring you know like they sell paper like in the office something like that they do something boring she works in the admin part of the office and she's extremely unhappy she's not doing well mentally she's pretty depressed anxious very socially anxious a lot of stuff going on there and um she hates work <laughs> and basically the way that she kind of lets out some of this feeling is when she has to email a co-worker that she doesn't like because they like never clean the microwave or something like that she will like say something bitchy or complainy or ranty at the end of the email but then put it into white text so that whoever receives the email does not see it until the opening of the book where she forgets to put it into white text and she gets reported to HR and uh, she has to go through some kind of special training in order to not lose her job but she maybe will still be losing her job and it makes everything incredibly awkward so this is all very the opening of the book so um, one of the things that HR does is that they put something on her computer i forget what it's supposed to do maybe track her or something like that but accidentally what it ends up doing is giving her access to everyone's emails all of her co-workers everyone in her job so that's kind of the premise is like what does she do with this information and at first she starts to kind of use it to spy on people learn more about their sad little lives and they're always 
bringing in the same stuff for lunch every day and all of this boring I really like kind of workplace centered books like temporary and like this one um I absolutely hate office culture it's my worst nightmare to work in an office um and uh I just I haven't worked in an office very much in my life but I have a little bit enough to find these little comments about these little routines that people have uh relatable in a kind of gross way <laughs> um and I, I so I really like all that kind of commentary on like the kind of mundane repetitiveness of office life and also the work that comes with working in an office that isn't actually part of your job like the the look the singing happy birthday to all your co-workers emptying the bins and cleaning the microwaves doing a round of tea for everyone stuff like that um so yeah but it's kind of that's the premise of the book and then as she's sort of nosing on everyone's emails and she's got this scheme where she has to prove herself the best person in the office so that she doesn't lose her job um she ends up you know learning <laughs> that these people have whole full lives outside of the office and she starts to empathize with them she starts to kind of like them she starts to sort of think about herself and also she has to go for these meetings with the hr guy um to kind of do it like a course on how to be nicer <laughs> in the office and they get along very very well and so this whole chain of events leads to sort of her reevaluating her life and starting to make some changes in her life and i thought it was really good um, I think I gave it three stars, I might have given it four, I mean like four seems high, so maybe I might have given it 3.5 if you could do that on Goodreads. Um, like it was very pasty, very readable, I like the characters, something I especially liked about this book is that the banter between her and the guy, like love interest, seemed really like genuine I suppose, like sometimes you can read that kind of like playful banter between characters that are getting along or flirting and it just feels cringe and awkward but it to me at least it felt very natural and I enjoyed reading their little chats together so I thought that was really strong it was well paced all the characters felt really well rounded she's got some like family stuff going on um and I yeah it was just like kind of well rounded well written good book I really enjoyed it um next I have two books by Cara Bastone which are audible exclusive which I kind of feel bad about including because like th then it's basically a podcast right there is no physical version but then it's is not it's no different to reading an audiobook if you just imagine that a paper copy exists in the world then it's the same as an audiobook but if the paper copy does not exist and it's audible only is it just like a podcast I don't know but it's on goodreads so i'm counting them um the first one out of the two that i read oh the baby's moving she's just right here she's fine the first one of the two that i read uh, i enjoyed the most it's called maybe this time great book that was so much fun i had a lot of fun listening to that book you know when you're enjoying an audiobook so much that you make excuses to make time to listen to the book that was this um it's a bit of a sci-fi premise it's about a woman who is a teacher and she accidentally gets sucked into a portal and ends up 10 years in the future do i mean 10 years in the future or it might be actually a lot further away it might be like 50 years yeah i think it's at least 50 years in the future because things are quite different um so she's like stuck in the future which is bad uh, mostly because her mum has dementia and she's like oh shit if I went to the future then in the present day my mum was left alone in a care home not alone to die but you know she, she, she visits her every day and she's worried and she wants to come home and the other perspective in this book is the male love interest who is a fellow teacher at the school who for some reason her phone can call him like her phone in the future can call him back in the present day uh that's the premise but she calls his phone like two weeks or so before she gets sucked into the portal so she's talking to him on the phone she convinces him what happened and she tries to get him to like befriend her so that he can stop her from ever stepping into the portal does that make sense so she's talking to a guy in the past and she's basically like become my best friend 
follow me around everywhere so that when that portal appears, you can stop me from entering it. That's, that's what happens in the book. Um, and so from there, they talk on the phone all the time and she's like giving him tips and advice on how to get present day her to like him and he ends up falling for her and blah 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 and then it all gets a little bit complicated because he's like well if I stop you from going into the portal then the you that I've been talking to never existed and am I gonna forget you and blah 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 it was su it was such a good premise if you enjoy things like um uh about time the movie uh with oh I've forgotten her name Rachel McAdams kind of that where it's like it's a sci-fi kind of love story but like you don't have to be into sci-fi to enjoy it uh i really really enjoyed it uh it was it was pacey good characters easy to listen to and well voice acted like there's no narrative it's just the calls between the two of them and it, it yeah it's very well voice acted the next one was a similar thing where there's, it was audible exclusive and it's just voice acting and it's just them talking to each other like there's no narrative um it was call me maybe by cara bastone it, again same author yeah it's like it's not that big <laughs> i'm just tired um and this one is about a woman who is a small business owner and she's trying to set up her website on you know some kind of squarespace type thing and she can't get it to work properly so she calls the customer service line and uh so the other perspective is the the customer service guy it's just the two of them talking to each other and that's the whole book is them talking to each other because then he gets very dedicated to fixing her problem she has this deadline of when she needs her website done by he can't figure out what the problem is but he's determined to help her and they end up staying on the line and chatting and chatting and kind of goes from there uh i really really enjoyed it I feel like I enjoyed the first one more because I really like the kind of sci-fi aspect element of it, but this one I think had better chemistry between the characters um, and that kind of thing. There's not there's not loads to say about it. It was well voice acted. Again, the talk between the characters, like all the other ones that I've enjoyed, felt quite natural. You know, it didn't feel cringe um, and it, it really felt like they had good chemistry and I just enjoyed listening in on them chatting together for a long time. It was really good. The last one, again, is good if you like uh, maybe this time that I just talked about or if you like uh, About Time, the movie with Rachel McAdams. Similar thing. It's called The Husbands by Holly Gramazio. 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 I'm going to stop saying that now. Um, I read this one on my Kindle. Again, I had not heard of it before until it just popped up somewhere and the cover looked cool and it sounded good. So... Um, I really, really, really enjoyed this. This was, I think, one of my top favourite books of the year, which was, again, very unexpected. Um, this is about a woman who lives in a flat in London. And how does it actually start? What happens in the first place? I think she's breaking up with her boyfriend and he goes into the loft to get her something, or the attic, whatever you call it in America, to get something. And then there's this light that flashes and the guy that comes down the ladder is a different guy. And she discovers that she has a magic loft where whatever a man, like her boyfriend, her husband, uh, her husband goes up there. Yeah, she's not breaking up with her boyfriend. She's getting divorced from her husband. And she discovers that whenever a husband... Oh my God, that's not the beginning. Oh. See, I just completely <laughs> messed it up. This is the whole thing, is that she doesn't have a husband. She doesn't have a husband, she's single, she gets home and finds a guy in her apartment. This, this is it. And then he goes up to the loft to get something. And when he comes back down, he's a different guy. And she discovers that she has a magic loft that a husband came out of one day when she was out. And uh, whenever the husband goes up, he doesn't come back down, someone else comes back down. So um, it's a really fun premise. And it's like it all checks out like she, like she really explicitly talks about some of the questions that I had as a reader like like um, she doesn't have the memories of them together but he does he knows her really well suddenly like the decorations in the apartment are different because they've lived different lives that kind of thing and it's so interesting and really fun um, they like that like 
it's just through this she sort of used it as a as kind of like self-discovery what kind of guy am I interested in you know like and she starts dismissing guys because of really nitpicky things and then she decides to try and stick with a guy for long enough and she starts questioning like who's deciding which guy is going to come down and and like it, it's a really really fun plot that that is a good look at like um dating I suppose it's kind of like a I was gonna say a critique of just like a, a satirization of it commentary in a fun way on like you know online dating and swiping left and right and that kind of thing and it was really really fun plot and it's like a fairly simple premise I mean not that simple I completely forgot how it started but like okay she has different boyfriends I mean husbands throughout the book but like it, it goes really interesting places with it she's a compelling character and uh, yeah all of the the author's really able to establish the the different men as different characters quite quickly which I thought was quite skillful it was a lot of fun and it gives you a lot to think about it's a nice kind of commentary and I just I really really enjoyed reading it and I was kind of sad when it was over I would have I would have read more so yeah I probably should have split this video into two but it's not bad 10 books in half an hour for me um I'd love to know if you have read any of these books I would love to know your thoughts on them um I'd love to know what you're currently reading at the moment I might do like a currently reading video as well because I'm currently reading like 20 books um thanks so much for watching I'm gonna say goodbye because this video is so long I'll see you in the next one bye